In today's video, we'll be taking a look at CSS subgrid, a CSS specification that in my opinion is actually super unused, even though it is stable in all of the modern browsers today. But I do get why it's underused, and that is because it's also a little bit confusing for which scenarios you can use it. Therefore, today we'll be taking a look at this pricing table on the Raycast website and see how we can improve this with CSS subgrid. Because this grid is using CSS grid, and that actually has a few downsides if the content would change in this element. So let's dive in by recreating this component and adding in CSS subgrid. Before we start to recreate this, let's first take a quick look at how the Raycast team actually built this component. One thing you notice is that the center element is actually offset a little bit, and that also means that the text is actually not fully aligned. That is something that I actually will undo quickly so we have a better overview of how this component is working. If we would remove the margin from the center element, then you see that all the different elements within these cards are on the same line, meaning the title, the price, even this annual pricing, they're all on the same line. Or at least that is the intention, because if you look at the 144 build annually line here, you actually notice that it is slightly misaligned. And the reason for that is because this $12 per month per user is actually slightly taller than this element, and that then causes everything to misalign. And this is exactly the kind of problem where CSS subgrid can help. So the way the Raycast team built this component is by making each different card being its own CSS grid. You notice that they defined template areas as well as set template rows, where all of these elements have a specific height, in this case auto, so that means that they automatically grow. And then this one FR unit that is actually set on the center element with all of the USPs. So that simply expands to fill all of the available space because all of the different cards do have the exact same height. What you should notice though is that every column has the same grid definition, but they're all on their own. The only thing that changes when all of its siblings change is the total height of the car. Everything in there will automatically then position because they have grid template rows auto. You could, of course, make this fixed pixel sizes, but with responsive design, that's absolutely not what you want. Because if text goes to the next line, then all of a sudden it might not fit anymore. And speaking of changing text, if we would, for example, take this text and we would change it to really, really, really forever, trust us. What you then notice is that all of a sudden everything starts to become misaligned. And that is again because all of these different grids are not connected with each other. And this is precisely where CSS subgrid will shine. Because what we can do with subgrid is we define this grid on the parent and all of its children are then using the exact same grid. Meaning that if one row in this grid, for example, this monthly pricing would change in height for one child, all of the other children will also grow the exact same row to the exact same height. Meaning that if content changes in one of them, that all of them grow with them and everything is still aligned. Time to see how we can recreate this with CSS subgrid. I already went ahead and created a very basic version of this pricing table, so we already have some components to start with. The first thing you of course see is that all the different blocks are underneath each other instead of side by side. So that's the first thing we need to change. If we go into the code, you see that we have a pricing diff, which is the wrapper of all of the columns. And then we have a card diff, which of course is all of the individual cards. Down here, you also find a little bit of styling to make it look a little bit more beautiful, but this is the main part that's important to you. If we quickly take a look at the HTML, you see we have this pricing diff and in there, there is a card diff and there's three of them for all the different cards. So the way we can put them side by side is by turning this pricing into a display grid. And then we can say grid template columns as repeat three min max zero one FR, which will then create three different columns with all the same width. So if you go back, you already see that all of the three columns are side by side. One thing you also notice is that all of the three columns already extend to the full height that is the height of the largest child. Also, it seems that all the different columns are also already aligned, but that is because all the different elements have the exact same height. So let's break that as well. We go back into the HTML. We can do the same change here. Really, really forever trust us. And once we do that, you all of a sudden see that everything starts to become misaligned. Now, like Raycast did, we can definitely take the approach they did, and we could even start to throw in some of these fixed sizes, but I would absolutely not go that way if you wanna align all of these items. So that is why we're not gonna do that, and we're gonna go with CSS subgrid. First, I'm gonna count the amount of rows that I want to have in the grid. I want to have all of these different elements on their own line. So we have one, two, three, four, 
and then the whole list is five and the button is six, meaning we have six rows in our grid. You could even say you want to wrap both the title as well as the subtitle in a single row. Then you also need to wrap it in a single element, but I'm gonna add them on their own row for now. So the way this works is that we simply define a grid on our parent. And we actually already did that. We already created the grid, so we have some columns. But we can simply add rows here as well. And you'd think it would break it, but it actually doesn't. First, we're gonna add grid template rows. And we could say repeat six auto. However, I wanna recreate the behavior that the Raycast team had, and that is that the USPs actually fill up all the remaining space. So we're actually gonna do the following. We're gonna add four times auto, then one FR, and then auto. Because the USPs are actually the fifth element within the diff, so this way, this will fill up all the remaining space. However, if we add only the rows here, and you would go back, you see that nothing happened because this grid currently only has one row because all of the different elements are on a single row. So the next step is to go into our carts and also make that display grid. Again, if you would do that, you see still nothing happened even though the carts themselves are display grid because the next step that we need to take is we need to say in grid template rows is subgrid. And by doing this, we're telling that for the rows, so not for the columns, it should use the grid of the parent. So in this case, we all of a sudden get six different rows. However, if you would only do that, you will see that all of the different elements are now overlapping, meaning that all of them are put in the first row. And why is that happening? Well, that is because all of these cards are currently only in the first row of the grid because, well, there's only a single row of cards. So they only take up one row of its parent grid. So what we need to do is we need to change this card to actually take up six rows. So then all of the child elements can spread equally over these available rows. That we can do by saying grid row span six, because this will tell this card to span over six rows to grow towards the height of six rows. If you do that, it looks like nothing happened. However, as you can see, all of the different lines are already aligned. The buttons are pushed to the bottom, the text grows in size, and everything is suddenly aligned. And I can prove that by going to this element. And if you then turn on the grid lines, you will see that all of these different rows are now all aligned. And that happens because this card spans the height of six rows and all of these different elements within them are now put in all of these different rows, meaning that all of them will get aligned. So even if this text, for example, would change and there would be way more text in here, you will see that everything gets neatly put down and everything is still aligned. And also if, for example, this main title, breakcast free, 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 even if that would grow, you also see that the row again goes down. And now, of course, you might not like this gap because these two should be connected. Well, you can change that in two ways by wrapping this element in a single row, so also in a single diff, or you can go towards this diff, or h2 in this case, and you could say align self end. This way, it always is at the bottom of its column and it always attaches to the subtitle. Depending on the layout you want, you might not like this top gap and you might want to group these two together, but this way, if the content changes, everything simply moves with it. One thing we still need to do though, is we can add a gap of, for example, 1.2 REM and then zero. So this way, as you can see, all of these different rows now also have a gap in between them. And I think it is at layouts like this that CSS subgrid really shines. You could also, for example, have some different cards with different types of content. Maybe it's blog posts, for example, or profile cards, things like that. All of these layouts where you want to have all of these different rows aligned together, you can use CSS subgrid instead of defining a grid within all of the different elements or using any fixed sizes. The main reason the Raycast team might not have opted for using CSS subgrid is because they want to offset this center element. That is a little bit hard to achieve with CSS subgrid because even if you would take this element and move it up, for example, the grid will still try to align everything. So what might happen is that this top title is actually moved up, but then all of the different rows would still be aligned. So I think one approach we could take here is actually using scale to create a similar result. That does mean though that the text scales up a little bit as well. So all of the different font sizes are not equal anymore. However, if you want to highlight the center element, 
maybe that's actually a valid way to do it. Let's try and recreate that by going in here and then we're gonna say card nth child two and then you say transform scale 1.05. And if we would refresh so the text is gone, you'll see that the title is indeed moved up a little bit as well as the button is actually moved down a little bit. So everything is slightly misaligned like is the goal if everything would be a little bit larger. However, the other columns are all still aligned. So I think using scale here might make a lot of sense because that way you can at least have everything else still aligned. So I hope that with this very short practical demo, you actually can see what the value of CSS subgrid is. Like always, you will find the code linked down below as well, including a live playground so you can experiment with this yourself. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.